Folks, come on over. We're going to have fun. We're doing a collection of salt shakers from around the globe. Most of the globe, anyway. Some of it, right here on my take on Home and Garden. Back by popular demand, a collection video, and most of these you have not seen up close yet. So we're going to have fun. Suggested by Markel, and I thought it's a good idea and we have not done it. So let's jump in to mid to late 1800s early milk glass. Can you believe it? Look at these beauties. Now I'm gonna, a lot of them I'm gonna just show one because it's so much on the table. There's really quite a few and it's a surprise of what we have and what we don't have as I reviewed it and looked at them. Okay, now you think that bumblebee and hive decor is something new of the last couple years look at this beauty it isn't this is from the 1800s beehive and bumblebee there is a door on the hive and we'll get a good close-up look of that I'm gonna have to move along so these are early American milk glass pieces in the EAPG, Early American Pattern Glass. Yes, it's pressed. Some of it, by the way, is hand blown into a mold. So, one of those is an example of that. We don't have time to worry about which one, but we'll see each one of those up close with the robotic camera. Here is the sweetest. <laughs> you can see we're getting a little more out of Art Deco and modern here. Early, mid-century modern. And this is by Westmoreland in the 60s. Now, we're still in American glass. These are EAPG clear glass. This was a popular, popular look. Look at these beauties. Some might even be cut, but I'm trying to find that, and I'm not seeing that yet. This one right here. This is a crystal, early crystal, and it is cut. And I'm going to show you the difference here. The difference is when you pick it up, Okay, and it's really sharp and crisp cuts on there. It's a giveaway. Look how sweet. Too cute. Now here's one that's EAPG, but it's the uh, flower is cut in. And this isn't even sandblasted in. Okay, it is hand cut in. So we'll get a look at that one. If you can see the difference I want to show this because you hear me talk about it all the time we'll give all these a turn up on the turntable so you can see all different these are no repeats here here's an example of a hand blown shaker okay look how sweet here it is. You can see the obvious breakaway when he's done. Even the glass has got a little twist in it. So that's telling you dead nuts right there about that one. A lot of these early American, they were just in a tin or nickel plated top. Okay, and that's why a lot of them, so many of them, are tarnished down pretty good. I don't I don't believe in taking your antiques and putting a bright spit polish on them at all. 
but you can see the difference. See by, okay, maybe 1950, these two, or 30s to 50, and then 1960, okay? That's the difference in the, the chroming and tinning process was developed more and more so and that's why this one is staying nicer but I'll tell you even the good ones the salt eats the heck out of them over use you guys probably know that because you've seen it happen all righty what else we got going on look at this view you saw this it was real popular everybody loved it here's a little condiment set now it's a salt and pepper but probably the one is a pepper the salt was in the open dish and a mustard was in this one with the spoon tell me if you grew up with one of those if you did you are old <laughs> not a soul out there is going to admit that they grew up with one of those now that I said that. <laughs> now here's some we're coming up into more of a modern look. We've got two of these and these of course you might have seen on tables and we actually use these. These are with the chrome lid and these are with the plastic lid. So they're not bothered by the salt or anything else and again still a pressed glass. I still put these early, you know, mid-century. So whether they're molded or pressed, they're not hand blown, but they are sweet. And this is typical of a more elegant set for today. You can still find these. You know that anyway. These are later, but still pressed glass. This is one of our main sets that we use daily at, you know, everyday table. At the breakfast table. Very cute and pretty in a classic shape. We're not worried about elegant every day when we're eating a bowl of cereal at the breakfast table. So the price is more reasonable that way too. Okay, here is, some of you have seen these, a wonderful cobalt blue in a silver sleeve, a decorative sleeve. Now I've seen a couple names on these, you can look them up. You can still get a hold of these and they are cute as can be. So there's a couple of makers. This one I did find and it seems to be American although it was elusive. So let's get that right on the light so you can see that cobalt blue on the one. Really cute. Just love them. Just like this set mid-century and before they incorporated a silver setting or silver plate setting with the salt and pepper or the condiment set. Here is an ultra modern. This is, oh, let's see, we gotta go backwards and right about maybe 98, 1997, 98. And these are part of a set we have that you always hear me talk about. It is a porcelain, and those are made in China. More modern here, and that is part of our anniversary set. Now, we're gonna be tied up for quite a little ways to get into some of the next countries. I'm going to do the ones with the least amount first, I think. Okay, and this little beauty is made in 
Italia. Just gorgeous. You see the style. RCR. Classic European gold top. Lots and lots of holes. Don't want to hold back that salt and pepper, boy. <laughs> Where our American sets have, you know, typically just a couple. It's just gorgeous. And you're going to see ones that look a lot like this from Europe. This is Italian, like I said, it's porcelain, and it's early century. Believe it or not, that is the only set I have from there. I know, it's hard to believe. Here's another one of a kinder, and it is tough to get something different than what the bulk of our stuff is. Bavarian? and made in Japan. You'll see it in a minute. Alrighty, this little beauty, look at the style. As sweet as can be, that is made in Austria. Here's a wonderful set. Now a lot of these are not marked, but I'm gonna remind everyone by what's on here, the handwork, the hand painting, it could be a lot of countries, right? All kinds of different countries did that. But it's the Moriaji, the raised dots that they did in ceramic and kind of a puff paint that gives this set away to me with no marking. That's the biggest thing I can tell you today, the difference between what you're going to see, they start looking the same unless they're marked, okay? You'll see that probably. Look at the, you can see through, see the fine porcelain. You can see through the bottom here. And made in Japan because of the Moriaji technique that they did. These you saw in a video when we went to Radiger's at the Super extravaganza, and we had a blast. You remember, if you saw that video, some didn't see it, and it is a fun one, and in your, there is just a ton out there to see. If you missed it, you really should look at it. There is acres and acres of one of the biggest flea markets here in Florida, right there at Radiker's in Mount Dora. Okay, here is another set made in Japan. This is where we just got them. Beautiful violets, hand painted, made in Japan. Here's another little sweet little set made in Japan. Now, you'll start seeing a pattern here with them um, these are earlier and they're smaller and they're just sweet as can be. These are getting near war time and pre-war for these, okay? Again, the tiny hand-painted work. There's a hand-painted name that is impossible to read because of wear and time. Okay, this little set again totally unmarked let me make sure i'm saying it right yep and these if you recognize the age with the little cork in the bottom typical of a lot of them a lot of different countries did the same thing if they have a plastic plug in the bottom they're newer <laughs> it's that simple okay so some are missing the cork and frankly some were shoved in too far and they're inside the shaker so we have some like that here too as well okay so again unmarked how do you know what are you doing what are you telling me hand painted with moriaji raised beading Dead giveaway for me. Made in Japan. Okay, let's look at those. They're so cute. These are 
made in Japan. So I put these after the war, post-war, post-World War II. Real sweet. More of an Art Deco shape here coming into MCM and they are cute with the sailboats. Okay, now we have more made in Japan and different styles. The taller upright with the round shape and these again. Here's grapes. You would swear this is Italian, but Moriaji. And there's actually something in there, like a paper and a cork. <laughs> and it must have been from the other one because this still has the cork in it. Very sweet. Raised Moriaji effect again. So, made in Japan. Now you miniature lovers and dainty folk, these are really sweet. They're amazing. Here again, hand painted. This one says Japan. So we don't have to worry about that. Oh, look at that porcelain shine through. Just amazing. You know, <laughs> what's funny is we don't even think about that we collect salt and pepper shakers till you get them all together. Because some went with sets and some were inherited and some we still use and on and on and on. But a lot of people have a huge salt and pepper shaker collection. And I know some of you out there know that and have friends that are like that. Here's another region of design from Japan. These are like pre-war 30s, 40s, and you'll notice that they match those dishes and cups and saucers with that deep cobalt blue and the wonderful gold trim. Each hole, each, can you imagine sitting there all day? Each hole is trimmed and hand done. These are unmarked. That tells me Japan. And they're very exquisite. Look at this. Look at this light up. That is a pair we'll show you. And then we have three individuals to show to keep it moving along. Again, that classic hand painted flowers with the cobalt blue dominant. And where's that Moriachi? Right here. Alrighty. Porcelain, yep. Look at the glow. We're glowing. See the light? This is the classic early shape. This bell, I call it. This is a bigger bell. I'm thinking these are 20s and 30s. Okay, if you look these up, again, the little cork is inside because <laughs> it was some dingbat pushed it too far in, but it is there. So that came with a little cork. It's very early, and the Moriaji is right in here in this work. You can feel it, and you can see it. Just exquisite. The hand work, slightly archaic florals, you know, they're not like the English or even the German flowers, but they're just wonderful. Each hole is gold trimmed. Again, we're rolling. We're going to move into a completely different country, and that is Germany. And, of course, the big porcelain fabric of Bavaria. Here we go. Here's the first pair. Look how cute. You'll see the style. The whole top is gold. 
the sides. Now these are early, man. I, uh, I can't get over that. These are, holy mackerel. I got to really think. These are in 1800s because this is before Germany was German. This is back when it was Prussia. And that's how it's marked. Okay. C and S. Just, just to hold them is amazing. Okay. From the 1800s. Look at that beautiful thing. That pair from Bavaria. Here's another set. And you'll notice that trumpet bell flower design here. Like we saw in a couple others in other countries like this one from Italy. You'd swear those are from the same country, but they're both marked again. Okay, made in for RNC Versailles, Bavaria. That's their brand, not not France, not that Versailles. All righty, let's look at those. Obviously, that whole column lights up. Those are a little thinner, so you can see them. We just have beautiful one after another coming here. Did you think you could get as excited as this over salt and pepper shakers? <laughs> I know a lot of people love them. And let me tell you, what I see out in the field, they're reasonable. You can always find some, whether they're vintage or not, even if they're more modern, it's an easy collection to get into, get started, or get your kids started on something fun. If they like it, they could be hooked. Alrighty. Still in Bavaria now. Look at this beautiful thing. This is marked Bavaria. And it looks like mm, wisteria to me or violets. Again, you can see through the porcelain. Might be a little tough on the camera. Here's another one. These are all marked, by the way, stamped. This one, Germany with the cork. Wonderful violets here. And the salt is highlighted with an S over the holes. <laughs> Real sweet here. I think these are turn of the century and they should return from the turn of the century. <laughs> Love that. What do you think? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. I know some of you have keepsakes and handed down and some of you might even collect these on your own. But like I say, it's surprising when you pull it all together how many there really are. Now this is what I call a drum shape. Classic. It has the hand painted artist on the bottom. Hoppy. Now this design is newer and it's 1970. This one I haven't completely identified. It could be Bavarian and that's my guess. So look at that light up. Now, even though we've reviewed these just recently in a birthday table, this design is so awesome to me because it's right out of Art Deco and might be right on the edge still in Art Deco 1930s, 40s, mid-century, and these are made in Bavaria. The two rose salt and peppers, you can just see the light through the bar. It's a little tough because it's an upright. And last but not least, in the Bavarian collection, worth showing again, 
sent to Angela by our wonderful friend Doy from Tennessee. Made in Bavaria, okay? Plastic button closer on the bottom. So these are newer. We can look up when those were made, but the reproduction, Bavarian, and hand painted. Are you ready? In 24 karat gold. Boy, it looks it, don't it? Compared to these, look at the difference. Most companies use 18. These are 24. And they just shine away. Man, there's no doubt about. When you get used to looking at them, that 18. We'll get that off here. And you can see that light in the little tray. Really sweet. Thank you, Doy, again. And guys, if you liked our collection of salt and pepper shakers, if you never thought there was a possibility that you could like them or that you would want to start collecting them, give us a like, a share, a comment, tell a friend. Tell them how much fun we have right here. We try to be informative as we collect and move through the seasons. We appreciate everybody that keeps us in mind. Check out our store. Check out a super thanks button. And we appreciate everybody. Have fun, guys. Happy summer. Hmm. I think I smell a shopping trip coming soon. And a 4th of July table right here on my take on Home and Garden. Bye guys, be good now. See you soon.